in the study of functions, one of the things that we can do is we can transform functions. We can move them around, basically. This video is a quick demonstration of how, uh, how we can vertically shift functions and horizontally shift them. Um, and that's all this video is going to show. So I have over here on the left-hand side, you can see um, kind of the template as to what happens with vertical shifting or horizontal shifting. Let's talk vertical first. If you, uh, if you know what the function's value is, if you know what f of x is, for instance, and you add on a constant at the end, it will shift the graph up. Or if you subtract a constant after the function's value, it will graph it down. Let me show you what I mean. Um, I've got my TI-84 here. I'm going to go to y equals, and we'll enter in a very popular function. How about the quadratic function, so x squared. And just so you can see what it normally should look like, and you should probably have this memorized by now, I'm going to do a zoom 6. Um, I recommend you do this just once so that it does a standard window size of negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis. So we can see kind of a standard, standard size. Okay, so here's our quadratic function. It's uh, parabolic in shape, not that big of a deal. Let's go back to our y equals and let's add on a constant at the end of this function here. So um, I'm looking down here at the bottom on the left and you see I have x squared plus three. So I'm adding a constant to the, to the end of the function here. I've got x squared is what my y value is. <clears throat> In other words, give me any x, I'll square it. That will be the y value, the f of x, right? And then I will add three to it. And watch what happens. So I'm going to put a plus 3 here at the end of this function. And if I go back to graph, you don't have to do zoom 6 anymore. You can just hit the graph button now. And notice what happened. Now that's called a vertical shift up. All right. So by adding a constant to the end of a function, you vertically shift it up. Um, here, let's go change that plus 3. Let's go check out this next one, which is what if this was a minus 4? Right, this is what the b is. What if this was x squared minus 4? So I'll put minus 4 here. Don't use the negative button. This is minus 4. All right, hit the graph and take a look at what happens. This time, it vertically shifts it down. All right, so instead of it sitting here, the, the, uh, what we'll call the vertex of this uh, parabola, instead of that vertex, the very bottom of it sitting at 0, 0, it's been shifted down 1, 2, 3, 4 places. All right, so that's not really a big surprise. Okay, what's interesting, though, is horizontal shifting. Horizontal shifting is completely opposite of what you might think. Vertical shifting, as we just saw, you see a plus 3 at the end, it goes up 3. You see a minus 4 at the, at the end of the function, it goes down 4. But for horizontal shifting, it's slightly different. So this time, the constant, instead of being outside of the function like it was for vertical shifting, the constant is directly affecting the x. So if x was 2, and the constant is 4. Do you see that right here? Right, x plus 4 on the inside. If the x was 2, uh, you're not giving the function the value 2 anymore. You're adding 4 to it first, which is 6, and then squaring that value. So watch what happens when we do that. So I'm going to go to my y equals. Uh, in fact, you know, let's just clear out what's there. Let's start over again, because this time I need a set of parentheses. And then I need to plug my x plus 4 in, close the parentheses, and now do the x squared on the, or the quantity squared on the outside there, right? So this is x plus 4 in parentheses squared, um, not the same as x squared plus 4. Okay, um, let's see, what does this look like? Now, here's the thing. You might think that a plus 4 moves the graph four places to the right. Well, that's not the case. You see what happened? It moved it four places to the left. All right, so horizontal shifting is counterintuitive. It works in the opposite direction of what you might think. So look at uh, problem D here. I've got x minus 5 inside the parentheses quantity squared. Which direction do you think horizontally that's going to shift it? Let's go try it out. So I'll punch in minus 5 here in my calculator. And you might think that it moves it five places to the left. Nope, it moves it five places to the right. <clears throat> okay, so horizontal shifting is counterintuitive 
The last part of this video then is, how about uh, e down here? What if I put an x plus squared on the inside of the parentheses and a minus 3 on the outside? This is a combination of both of these now. I've got a little vertical shifting as well as horizontal shifting going on. Let's go try that out. All right, so I'm going back to my y equals. I'm going to type in x plus 2 inside the parentheses. Now that's the horizontal shift. Which way is that going to go? Not to the right, but to the left. Yeah, it's going to go two places to the left horizontally. Uh, but then outside of this function, outside of my square, I'm going to put a minus 3. Let's see, i get my calculator to behave here. So minus 3 on the outside. All right, so again, I'm expecting this to move two places to the left because that's a plus 2 counterintuitive horizontal shifting. And three places down, that's the vertical shifting. And let's see if we're right. Sure enough, we are. Two places to the left, three places down. There's a combination of both vertical and horizontal shifting.